And that was SmackDown Live. What a show. Wow. I can't wait to get into it and dive deep into it. And thank you for watching. So welcome to the Coach and Crew Show. I am your host, Charlie Krause. And we're going to talk about SmackDown. Here we are eight days before the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. I know they don't use the word pay-per-view anymore, but pay-per-view. So before, before we get started, please, if you already haven't, hit the like button in the bo bottom right corner. Make sure you subscribe and so that you can get up to date on all of our episodes and so you always get the recent push-outs. Additionally, go to our website, coachingcrewshow.com. You can see everything. For WWE alone, I, we cover the SmackDown, the SmackDown. Huh. We cover SmackDown, Raw, and then all pay-per-views. And in addition, we also have our power rankings updated every weekend or after each pay-per-view. So check that out as well, coachandcrewshow.com. So Friday Night SmackDown just ended. What an opening. What a show. Let's get right into it. Usos are recognizing Roman Reigns. And what a great video promo, if you will, of Roman Reigns. That was one of the better ones. Probably not as good as the Bobby Lashley, Brock Lesnar promo from earlier this week, but good tribute to Roman for 508 days, 504 days, whatever it was of consecutive wins and how long he has set the streak for the Universal Champion. Well, we knew what would happen next, and Seth freaking Rollins' music kicked in and enters in. So good to see him. Good, good to start the show off on some positives. Announces a, a tag match for the Usos to be barred from the ring. All right, good. So is it going to be two on one, or how's it going to go? Is my boy Cesaro going to actually show up? No. KO's theme music hits. That's nice. That's real nice. But the story of the opening promo was not the stipulations for the main event. It was Seth Rollins using the word Mox, M-O-X, as in John Moxley, as in a.k.a. Dean Ambrose. <sighs> My mind is still blown that Vince allowed him to say that. Is that a hint again that he would come back, even though he's involved heavily on a storyline on the other show that to which this show does not mention? I don't know. I'm just shocked Vince allowed that, and the internet was too. So, woo, good promo, good segment to start things off. And yes, go back to full circle stipulations. If KO and Seth freaking Rollins win the tag match, Usos are barred from ringside in their main event at Rumble next week. But if the Usos wins, Roman Reigns gets a vacation to WrestleMania, an automatic buy to WrestleMania. We all probably know how somehow, some way this show is going to end, but that's not the point of the story. All right. I know a lot of people like Madcap Moss. I think he's got expressive speed and some good skills. He's partnered with happy Baron Corbin and, and they're, and, it, and it's working, it's working for them and they're doing something right. And they're building momentum on it. And Kofi should have, in my opinion, never lost clean last week. So here comes a match again, because why not? Because Kofi needs something because he doesn't have anyone else since Xavier King Woods is now out with injury or so I thought, because this is now it's become a super show. Because in comes Big E. So that's two Raw superstars in the first two segments. Kofi wins SOS and gets the revenge tied at one. Later in the show, we find out next week that Big E and Kofi reuniting as the New Day to take on Happy and Madcap Moss. Maybe this is just building some heat to the Rumble. I'm glad. I'm tired of only seeing this stuff when it happens for when we get to Survivor Series because they've made Survivor Series now a lesser tiered pay-per-view. That's a different story. We're working our way towards Rumble, which is traditionally one of my favorite of all the pay-per-views. So 
I'm okay with the cross branding. I'm okay with the interacting back and forth. I wish they do it more often. I wish there was one champion and then each show could have their own champion, but there was only one true champion and all superstars could interact on both shows, maybe minus that one champion. But whatever. It, it, that's that's just opinion. That's just whatever. If you like what I say so far, make sure you comment along. If you agree with me, comment. If you don't, this, if you disagree, comment. And we'll interact with you and, and see how it goes. All right, moving on. Aaliyah. So far, I'm on Team Natalia. Natalia's technically 0-2. But so far, I'm on Team Natalia. She now lost by DQ this week. At least she didn't get pinned in 1.7 seconds, which was still ridiculous if you ask me. So whatever. Trying to set a little hype up and trying to build some momentum in the tag world, the Viking Raiders. I'm sorry, these guys look good. I'm an Ivar fan. Any big guy who can do anything athletic, I'm always going to be a fan of. It just is. I've always been a big show fan. I like Ivar. Eric actually was the impressor one today. So I'm glad they got a good win. I'm glad they look good over Los Lotharios. It didn't really push their storyline forward, but it helps say that, yes, they are the number one contenders for the SmackDown title. They still haven't sound announced officially yet if they're going to be at Rumble or not. They might be next week or the week after Rumble, or it might be in the Rumble pre-show. I don't know. But I'm, I'm assuming the Usos will still be heavily favorites for that match. But until then, it's fun to watch a little small rise for the Viking Raiders. They have landed on the shores of Samoa. Raid, raid, raid. In a story that just needs to end, Charlotte was there almost as an afterthought because the story doesn't even involve Charlotte. Here you have your... SmackDown Women's Champion without a storyline at the Royal Rumble. And her storyline is trying to pull a Brock Lesnar and go to and win the Royal Rumble match. Not working for me. What is working for me, though, is not even on screen. It's probably a, she probably won't be on screen again until the Royal Rumble match. And that's Lita. I highly expect Lita to eliminate Charlotte. And Lita will either go on to win Mania and face Charlotte, or somehow Charlotte will get Lita at Mania. I, I, I feel my heart and hearts that's going to happen unless Bailey or Asuka returns to SmackDown. Not returns at the Royal Rumble, because I see both of them returning at the Royal Rumble. I really miss Bailey. I love that Karen character. I uh, hate it, but I love it. I wish Bailey was a face, but she's playing this heel perfectly. So if either one of them were in the Rumble or go to SmackDown, then that could change the ultimate storyline. But I'm thinking lead up, one more push, one final push with Charlotte. But we'll have to wait eight days to find out about that. The real story is Sonya Deville and her whatever rivalry with Naomi. We knew how this was going to end the moment she put on the referee shirt. Okay. So technically, Naomi tapped out before she even tapped out, like a Montreal screw job type of things. Whatever. Okay, whatever. So maybe next week it'll finally come to a conclusion. I highly doubt it. Somehow, some way, this is going to get dragged out to hopefully rumble. And at, maybe at rumble, the storyline can, can be settled. And they might push it all the way to mania. We'll see. And that's just one of those we're going to wait and see type of things. In one of the more predictable finishes, I hope not, though. I'm kind of hoping not, though. We'll, we'll see where I'm going with this. Sammy Zayn came out, and he's going to be insane trying to mock Johnny Knoxville. Once again, look at another superstar coming out because you know how this is going to go. And he's going to do his own stunts on himself, much like AKA Knoxville does. Well, we know the setup, we know the falsehood, and then Knoxville comes out and stuns Sami Zayn and eliminates Sami Zayn for a cheap pop. This is, you know, trying to get some major promos and get some buy-ins and uh, getting the hype and getting the ratings all for Rumble. 
So I see what you did there. Okay. Now Knoxville has eliminated Zane two uh, two times. Will it be three out of three come Rumble? We'll find out. Here's one thing I definitely know 100%. Johnny Knoxville is not going to win the Royal Rumble and go on to WrestleMania. And I'll parlay that with this one. I bet you he's going to take a hell of a bump. A hell of a bump. He's not going to be the Drew Carey running away from Kane and barely can get over the top rope. No, he's going to be Andre the Giant running away from Jake the Snake Roberts' the snake trying to get out over that top row quickly. He's going to take one of the bigger bumps we've ever seen by a celebrity superstar at, at any times. So that much I am sure of, and I'm actually looking forward to it. What I'm also kind of wondering, though, is will Sami Zayn get the last laugh and send Knoxville over the top rope, or will Knoxville go three for three? We'll see. I don't know. I, I kind of want Sami Zayn to, to eliminate Knoxville just because, just because. But, and Johnny Knoxville's crazy. We all know that. So that's reason enough to like the guy. And I hats off to him because he does things none of us would even, even, why would we even think of doing? Plain and simple. Again, the most pointless belt on, in, WWE right now is not the 24-7 championship. It's the Intercontinental Championship. All we did was have Rick Boog say his name in front of Double J while Shinsuke stood there and watched. How worthless. Sammy's the number one contender. Get that over and done with. Put the belt on Sammy. Make that title relevant again. It has no meaning and no purpose. They don't know what to do with him. They can't most people need a belt as the crutch. Well, that crutch is there. He needs a second crutch at this point. I don't care when this happens, but get the belt off of both of them. Not just Shinsuke, both of them. Rick Boobs included. Main event time. The tag match. Seth freaking Rollins. And how fun is it to say that? Come on, you know you enjoy saying that. And KO, his best bud, the most truthful person in the building against the Usos. Fun match. Fun SmackDown main event match. Lots of back and forth. Got some hot tags in. I thought it was going to be a clean finish with a hot tag to Seth Rollins. I'm sorry, Seth freaking Rollins. I also thought, even before the match started, I thought it was going to be Seth pinning Jimmy. That was just my prediction. I was close. And I knew Roman would have some involvement. Superman punch during the match in front of the referee on Seth freaking Rollins. I'm going to call him SFR. And they got the DQ. So I guess Roman was having none of it. I thought it was going to be a clean finish. And then Roman would come out and have the shots. But he, he made the DQ victory go to Seth Rollins. So SFR will now be a one-on-one -on -one true match, and the Usos will not be ringside. Okay, I'm good with that. Hey, it moved the story full forward. It put people like Kevin Owens as a good pop because that made it fun to see, something you weren't expected to see. And that's what makes these shows interesting, is when you know everything that's going to happen, when it happens, and how it happens, and why it happens, not exactly interesting stuff. You find yourself playing on your phone the whole time and kind of is bored. But no, 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 no. When you hear words like me and Mox and you have Big E show up and you have Kevin Owens show up, wow, now that makes a, pro, a good show. So now what's going to happen on SmackDown? Are SmackDown people going to invade Raw come Monday night? Countdown, the go-home show to the Royal Rumble? I don't know, but I'm vested and I'm in. How do you feel about this? Come on, Crew Nation, speak up. Reply. Go to coachingcrewshow.com and make sure you like and subscribe to us. Comment away. Thanks for watching. This has been fun.